Basically, the uh, pre rotator is nothing more than a, a DC motor and a gearbox. I believe this is a 16 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, it's a cluster gear, it's a two stage gear setup. It comes with a uh, connector and it's got a built in one way bearing. Um, and that section is connected to a flex shaft which is attached to the rotor shaft or rotor uh, axle. Okay, I had to disassemble the auto start unit because uh, on my particular one I had about 12 flights and the uh, auto start switch, this electronic device that's attached to the motor uh, gave out. Well, I went uh, one step further and I connected a uh, speed control, regular uh, I believe this is a 20 amp uh, variable speed control and uh, I connected it, I got it to uh, work okay but then I was getting some slipping in the uh, flex shaft so I went ahead and removed the flex shaft from this unit and for those of you that are not familiar with these things uh, in fact uh, there's no way you can be familiar with this unless you're your manufacturer or the uh, designer but I just want to point out a couple things here that you got to be aware of this part right here is actually threaded into the shaft and it's not press fit it's actually threaded and standard uh, right hand thread to tighten it left hand thread to un un undo it hook this up to my lathe and I unthreaded it really easily that, that way you can also clamp this with a, a, a vise or grab it with a pliers and unthread this part and basically that's how you pull this section out so there's something wrong in here mechanically that's not performing well because even with my electronic uh, switch which has a, a soft start and I can gradu gradually increase the speed with this thing via the, the transmitter set settings uh, this was still slipping okay so this is the gearbox it's been uh, taken apart and uh, Here's the, uh, the one-way bearing. Primary stage, secondary stage. So this is the one that has the one-way bearing installed. And, and so this was slipping on the one-way bearing. If it doesn't have the pressure, uh, we can see the see this the crack here and so what's going to happen is that the gear is just going to spin it's not going to grab onto the one-way bearing and you're going to lose uh, the tension on the, on the rotor so that's what was happening so I don't have a, a gear that's got 40 teeth unfortunately of this particular pitch so I, what I ended up doing is I ended up making these rings on the lathe and these are plastic rings that fit inside the gear. The gear has these uh, indentations on both sides that I'm going to drop a little bit of CA glue and just uh, pop that ring there and it should hold it on both ends. I could have made these out of aluminum but uh, I don't want to take a chunk of aluminum and, and, and machine that so I had uh, some plastic tubing uh, this is ABS and uh, ABS tends to grab really nice to uh, with glue to plastic parts. The gear has been repaired with the rings that have been CA glued to the indentations on each side of the gear. Now we'll take the uh, one-way bearing and we can just simply press that into the gear. Now I can feel some tension here before I could do it by hand and now it's a little bit tighter and that's because the gear is has been repaired 
So what we're going to do is we're going to press this on the small press and I'll come back to this video. Okay, we pressed the uh, one-way bearing inside the gear and now it's uh, ready to be reinstalled into the, the gearbox. So want the shaft to spin counterclockwise because that's how the rotor uh, spins because that's how the main rotor rotates. So you want the shaft to spin counterclockwise while the motor spins the gears also counterclockwise. The second just gotta make sure that this is right. Okay, so let's put back the uh, the top. Now, my case is a little messed up here because I originally, without realizing that this was a screw on part, I tried to pry this out with a with a press, but I was noticing that I was uh, encountering a little bit of tension, and uh, and I actually uh, cracked this part just a little bit because I put a little too much pressure there, and since it wasn't giving, I started started to uh, look a little deeper and uh, came to this uh, realization that this is a screw on part here and some of the things you run into without really knowing too much about this the, the, the gearbox how it, how it was assembled but I've gone through the process so no, so that you uh, you are aware of that and now you know Okay, this is a plate that I made for the uh, for the gearbox here because I accidentally was trying to press the uh, this shaft, the, the one-way bearing shaft, through the back here, through the bottom, and I put a little too much pressure that I ended up cracking the plastic part here. So I made this plate to reinforce that section. We're going to reassemble this and we'll come back to the video. Okay, so the uh, couplers. Uh, installed back onto the one-way bearing shaft there's a color underneath the, the shaft Tighten the screws here, set screws, and that part is ready to, to go back to the, to the flex shaft. Okay, so make sure that part spins freely counterclockwise. You gotta tighten this. So, I'm using a servo tester to test the unit outside the model. I'm using the speed control that I replaced the uh, original electronic uh, soft start switch with. It's connected to a battery. I'm using the same connector with a uh, JST uh, end here, coupler, so that I can make this connection. And so, when I use the uh, potentiometer on the servo tester, I should, I should get that spinning counterclockwise. I can hold the, the unit with my hand and put a little pressure to see how, it, how it's holding on. And it's holding on. Now this is a little bit noisy because one of the gears, one of the gears was um, uh, it split. The plastic uh, split, and the, and the gear was uh, busted, and, and we ended up uh, fixing that gear with a couple rings as, uh, in the previous uh, section of this video. So that's what the gear noise is coming from. It's a little imperfection there, but it works. 
Now I'm doing this until I get the new gearbox. Once I get the new gearbox, I'll probably replace that. But if it's still working, I'll just keep this one as, as is and keep the other one as a spare. Um, so anyway, that's how it works with the speed controller.